At a time and era where there was temptations all across the world, Muslims had great amounts of wealth. But Hassan al became a man that kept himself away from the wealth of the world and he connected himself to the Akhirah. Hence, people loved him. Stay away from that which people have and people will love you. And that's exactly what he did. He removed the luxuries and the temptations of the world from his life and the world became subservient to him. People started loving him and they used to come to him just to hear a few words. His gatherings, people would be sitting outside the doors of the masjid just to hear a few words of his wisdom. And he had the wisdom that would make people cry. He would remind people of the akhirah. The man that we're speaking about today, the individual that we speak about today is that personality who established this fact that if we want to reach the epitome and the pinnacle of the greatest skill that a human can ever achieve in his life, which is connecting himself or herself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also has to put in front of him that individual or those personalities that, can, that he can emulate or that she can emulate and follow and bring his skills or her trace into his life so he can also connect himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the man that re-established the significance of this at a time where the, where the kings of the Umayyah Khilafah were once again reforming the, the setup that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah had set, where they once again were oppressing the people beneath him, where they once again had drowned themselves in the sins and transgressing the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This man came and established the fact that if we want to save yourself, if you want to save yourselves from their harms and their effects and their sins, Connect yourselves to good people. Connect yourself to a mentor that has mastered the skill of connecting himself or herself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you will hence also become successful. And this was none other than the great Al-Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah ta'ala. Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah was born in the year 21 after Hijrah with two years remaining in the Khilafah of the great Umar radiallahu anhu. He was born and brought into this world in a very sacred and blessed environment. He was, he was fortunate to be brought into the house of Umm Salma, Umm Mu'min radiallahu anha. His mother Khira was a maid for Umm Salma. So when he was born, he was brought into the, the household of the Prophet His father was a servant of the great Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu, Katib al-Wahi. So he was raised in the environment of these great personalities. Umm al-Mu'min, Umm Salma was raising him. Zayd ibn Thabit was teaching him. And as a child, as a child, Umm Salma would make him meet various great Sahabas. He was, when he was born, Umm Salma took him to Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar radiallahu anhu. And when Amir al-Mu'mineen saw him, he said, name him Hassan because he's so beautiful and Allah has given him such beauty, physical beauty, even as a child. This is what Imam al-Dahabi rahimahullah would say to his students, go meet Hassan al-Basri, but he would not say his name. He would say, go meet the most beautiful person in Basra. The most beautiful, the most radiant, the most, you know, the most physically attractive person in Basra, go give him my salam. So Allah had given him great physical beauty as he had given him great internal beauty. And Umar names him and then he says, Oh Allah, give him the, the wisdom and the understanding of deen and give him the love of people. Make, make it so that the world loves him. And the world is attracted to him, not only because of his physical beauty, because something that he has internally. And what did he have internally? He has something profound internally, where Khalid says, when Maslama ibn Abdul Malik asked him, tell me something great about Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah. He says, the reason why he became such a, such a saint, and the reason why he became such a profound personality, where the world is falling to his feet, and where everyone wants to hear his lectures, he says, not a, there is not a single person that I know whose actions in front of people are so close in resemblance to his actions in secrecy. And the words that he says, his words are, are so much in resemblance with the actions that he performs that if he was to order something, he would be the first to do it. And if he was to, he, if he was to forbid people from doing something, he was the first to become abstinent towards that item that he is forbidding people to, to come towards. This is the quality that brought people towards his love. So Umar made this dua for him as a child. This is why it's important to take duas of pious people. 
If a pious scholar or a sheikh or an imam comes to your house or your masjid, you, you have him make dua for your family. It's important. It has an effect in your, ch- in your child's life. Moving on, as a child, he drank from the blessed milk of Umm Salma radiallahu anha. As a child, Umm Salma says his mother would go to do the, 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 the chores of the house. And at times he would cry and become uneasy. So I would hold him near my chest and he would drink and suckle from my milk. Imam al-Ghazali says, It's the consensus of all the scholars that there, are, there is no one in the world whose words and sentences and whose advice is more resembling to the advice of the prophets than Hassan al-Basri rahimahullahu ta'ala. He had this wisdom. In this, wis- in this wisdom, he associated to the fact that he drank from the milk of Umm Salma radiallahu anha. Rabbi ibn Anas, his student, says that for 20 years, I sat in the gatherings of my teacher, Hassan al-Basri, my mentor, my murabbi. Not once did I hear something that came from his mouth, twice. Not once did I hear him say the same type of advice two days in a row, or even one year after the next hearing the same advice. I never heard him say one thing twice. Allah gave him such profound wisdom. But what made him beloved towards people? Why did people love him? Why did people, why are people, every group in the world, every Muslim group in the world claims the Hassan Rahimahullah is theirs. The fuqaha say he's a faqih. The mufassirin say he's a mufassir. He, everyone wants them to claim Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah. What was great about him? There are two specific qualities that I found that stuck out to me and that, that really touched me. That the reason why he became Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah and that those qualities that he, he, he excelled in. Number one, he had the quality of being in the companionship of sahabas, which cannot be cannot be substituted by anything else in the world. So Hajjaj ibn Yusuf one day asked him, what gives you strength? What gives you motivation? You know, sometimes you work so hard and you're trying so hard and people ask, you know, what, what motivates you? See, ya Abu Sa'id. What motivates you, O Abu Sa'id? He said, the two years that I was alive in the Khilaf of Umar and I was in the Suhba and in the companionship of Umar radiallahu anhu, that has helped me today and that is what gives me strength today good companionship and he re-established this fact that if you want to connect yourself to Allah connect yourself to good people and be in the company of people that remind you about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who be with those people that are good friends today we have friends but when we are with them does our iman increase does our knowledge increase this is what the Prophet says that a sign of a good friend is three that when you see him you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when you hear him and when he speaks, he increases you in knowledge of deen and of Quran and hadith. And by seeing his actions and how he lives in the world, his dealings of the day and his actions of the day and his dealings with Allah at night, when you see him and when you get to know him, you remember the akhirah because you know that a person of the world that cares about the world will never perform such acts of worship. These are the qualities of a good friend. Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah re-established this point that have good people around you and you will see the effect in your own life. This is why once a thief, the famous story, when a thief came to his house to rob him at night, he comes to his house and he sees there is nothing there. And Hassan rahimahullah is praying after he finishes the hajjud. He comes to him and says, hey, give me something. Give me, give me wealth, give me gold, silver, whatever you have, give it to me. Hassan rahimahullah says, I have nothing. He says, I know you have something. He says, if you want what I have, Go make wudu and come back. So the man goes, performs wudu, comes back, and he says, If you want what I have, pray two raka'at tahajjud with me. The man performs, he was a Muslim, the man performs two raka'at tahajjud. And after he finishes praying two raka'at tahajjud with the great Hassan al-Basri rahimullah, Hassan al-Basri turns towards him and he says, Do you need anything else? Do you want anything else? Did you come? Did you get what you came for? And the man says, Oh Imam, there is nothing that I need anymore. Because now I have the happiness and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why they say, if you go to the people of the world, to wealthy people, they will give you wealth. If you go to people of education, they will educate you. But if you go to the friends of Allah, they will give you the friendship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will give you the qualities, they will, they will, they will put those qualities inside of you that make Allah happy with you. That please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was what Hassan al-Basri rahimullah was able to do. And because of this one quality, he was a great man. Secondly, was the quality of his self-discipline, his self-control. 
his zuhud of the world, where he was able to control himself. At a time and era where there was temptations all across the world, Muslims had great amounts of wealth. But Hassan Basra became a man that kept himself away from the wealth of the world and he connected himself to the Akhirah. Hence, people loved him. Stay away from that which people have and people will love you. And that's exactly what he did. He removed the luxuries and the temptations of the world from his life and the world became subservient to him. People started loving him and they used to come to him just to hear a few words. His gatherings, people would be sitting outside the doors of the masjid just to hear a few words of his wisdom. And he had the wisdom that would make people cry. He would remind people of the akhirah. Once he said one of his wise sayings from his oceans of wisdom. He says, Hey, Hata, hey, Hata. Ahlak al nas al amaniyu. Qawlun bila amal. Wa ma'rifatun bi ghayri sabag. He says, What has happened to people? He was the man that would say that we are living in Basra. We think there are Muslims here, but there are munafiqs living here. There are munafiqs living in Basra. There are people that are hypocrites living in Basra. And this was a statement that was known about him. Because he would say, People say they're Muslims. But they are not acting upon the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say they have iman, but they are not able to continue the struggle of reaching the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do I see people, but I don't see them connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And, and I hear people, but I don't hear anyone that is crying in front of the gates, in the, in the doors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we want also to be loved by people, and if we want also to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we take these two qualities of Hassan al-Basri into our life. And we will find that Allah will be happy with us and the people around us will also become happy with us. Number one, surround ourselves with good companions. Surround ourselves with good friends. The Prophet says, a man is on the religion of his friend. A man is on the lifestyle of that which his friend lives. I can judge and you can judge how I am or we can be judged by just our friends. If my friend is one way, we can be judged that we are the same. So be careful on who you choose your friends can be. Not everyone can become your friend. Not everyone should be your companion. Bring those friends in your life that remind you about Allah. Not only should we try to bring those friends into our life, but rather we should become that friend. When people see us, they remember Allah. When people hear us, their knowledge increases. And when people see your actions, they remember the Akhirah. We become that friend. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surround us with those same friends. And number two, we live in a time of temptations. We live in a time of, of desires and fitan. Bring the quality of self-control. So Ali radiallahu says, learn the weaknesses of our nafs. What's my weakness? Is my weakness speaking about haram? Is my weakness looking at haram? Is my weakness listening to haram? Is my weakness touching haram? Establish the weakness that I have in my life and learn how to control it. How do I control it? How do I control my weakness? By having a mentor in my life. And this is what Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah established. Having someone that I can look up to and I can speak to and I can talk to and they can help me get better in the, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continue progressing in the, in the stages of the akhirah by having that individual, that personality that gives me the quality of mastery over my nafs and over my temptations and my desires. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with these two profound qualities. A, having good companionship. And B, having self-control and having self-discipline over the desires that we have within ourselves and within our nafs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us realize the importance of these people and the legacy they have left in the world. And let us be those individuals that are not only hear their stories and become happy thinking that we had such great role models, but actually take those qualities that made them great and that made them those saints and that made them those spectacular personalities and also bring those personalities into our life. Jazakallahu khair wa akhu da'awan alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.